I'm here in Needham Market and today I'm going to be sorting out possibly the worst patio install I've ever seen on a new build site. As you can see this site hasn't been built very long, very modern houses and it looks really really nice from the outside but when you investigate a bit further you can see there's a few things that have been done wrong. So as we go through the gate, fancy a site of buying a new place and having your garden left like this. This is not what I would want at all. All high, all soil like this, no good at all. But the biggest issue is right here. The patio itself looks fairly level in itself, but the levels are all wrong. As we can see here, we've got a big gap underneath the level from the height of the patio here. And this actual frame here is just a bit of plastic. Underneath this, there'll just be a little bit of sealer that stops anything going into the inside. So any water that comes across this patio now, is gonna go down into this little gap and straight into the building. As you can see, it, water will come down here because the garden is higher. It will come along, drop down into this little gap and then get in, drop down into this little gap and then get in underneath that frame into the inside and what's been happening is it's been making the carpet on the inside soaking wet which is not what you expect when you get a brand new house to walk to go towards your back door and step in a puddle every time you you go to go out the door from the inside let alone the outside so we're going to be ripping all of this patio up today every last bit of it right the way up to this fence line here all of these slabs are coming up and all the way around the corner here. We're gonna be replacing them with a different sort of slab this time as well, something a little bit better on the eye. So this is gonna be a really nice job by the time I'm finished. That way, the garden will be nicely leveled up with some of the, the, over, the stuff that I take out of here, I can put up that side to help build up that ground to get that leveled because at the moment the garden's running upwards. So we're gonna try and level that out a bit with some of the stuff that I take out. Also, then the retaining wall will stop any of this soil bringing, coming forward onto the patio. Another thing as well, I'm gonna be running an echo drain along this wall here to pick up any water that would come out. If there is anything that comes off of this, it will fall into the echo channel and not go into the house. I'm gonna do my best to get an absolute match to these bricks so that it looks the same as the, as the build. So fingers crossed I'll be able to find a very good match to these. If not, I'll have to get myself a red brick, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get these. Fingers crossed I can get them, but if not, I've got another idea of a brick, which I can get, which looks very similar. The retaining wall that I'm gonna put through here has to return along this edge as well, because when I take all of this soil down, you can see there's nothing underneath these fence panels here, underneath these gravel boards. So when I get the patio down, there's gonna be a void there beneath the underside of that gravel board and where the patio is, nothing there to retain the stuff the other side. So I'm gonna run the wall right away along this edge as well, right up to this fence line here where it meets the corner. Then you won't have any unsightly soil along that edge there, which will look absolutely disgusting. So the wall's gonna to have to continue along and go along this bit as well. And roughly in the middle here somewhere, I'm gonna leave a gap in the wall slightly, but I'll build a step system in this bit here so they've got a way to step up into the top. I'll do a nine inch wall through here with drainage through at the bottom of it, and then a brick on edge along the top to keep that looking nice. So I'm just waiting now for my machine to turn up and I've got some skips turning up as well so I can get the stuff out. I'm gonna take this fence panel out, that way I can get the stuff out easier than trying to get all the, all the stuff through that gate. <laughs> The echo channels are going to run along this wall, around this corner, and I'm going to plumb them into the existing echo channels, which are here. I just thought I'd pick up this manhole cover and see what's going on beneath. It's quite deep because I'm going to have to be able to lower this one as well to get it all to the right levels. So that shouldn't be a problem. I then lifted out the fence panel and protected the gravel board with some timber. I've got myself a new tool bucket. Got a tricky bricky sticker on it now. But the difference between this bucket and why I bought this was because I was watching Alder Trail on Instagram. Check him out, he's really cool. Got a lot of good tips for you boys out there. He always starts his videos with, all right lads. Anyway, yeah. 
The beautiful thing about this bucket is it's got this curve in it. So when you're walking, it's closer to your leg and your arm's not out here like this. Like for instance, if you're out there, your arm's on the wonk. But like this one, it just brings it in that bit closer to you, to your side, and you're not giving it all that on your shoulder. So it'll be good for the lower back. It'll stop the old sciatica and all that stuff. Cause I know most of us boys in the building game, we've all got bad backs. So anything to help that, I'm a big advocate for. So well done out of trail for spotting that one. And yes, I bought one. <laughs> so it was out with the old and in with the new. So this is the stuff we're gonna need for the job. Eight meters of echo channels, that'll be enough to get us around that building. 550 face bricks and 100 engineerings. I'm gonna put 100 engineerings down on the ground first of all to get it out of the ground. That way it's gonna be protected from the elements and it shouldn't affect the bricks above. 35 square meters of slabs, six OSD boards for my materials to go on so we don't damage the, the block paving on the outside. I've said 10 ton of type one at the moment, although I haven't ordered it yet because I've got a feeling there's gonna be some type one underneath these slabs. So we might be able to reuse some of it. Three bags of ballast should be enough to do all of our footings for the walls. Five bags of sharp sand. When I say bags, I mean 800 kilo bags as well, not small 25 kilo ones, the big bags, the bulk bags. We should only need four tubs of jointing compound for this, 22 bags of cement, one feb, and some two inch drainage pipe for, to go in the bottom of the retaining wall. So any moisture that comes from the higher amount of ground will be able to escape there and not blow the brickwork. And now my digger has arrived, come on. So I carefully track the machine over the gravel board gently as I go putting the bucket down as I went just to make sure it took some of the weight off of it and then I started digging I had to pull a few of the slabs up next to the house just to make sure I didn't damage it but before I knew it I had a big pile of slabs there ready to go so now our first skip of many has turned up so I've been doing quite a bit of digging out and we've got a big pile here ready to go in there I'm going to get rid of this lot now into the skip and then we've got the skips on turnarounds. I'm not quite sure how many skips I'm going to need yet, but it'll be at least two, maybe three, might even be four. But we've got them on turnaround so I can fill them up, phone them up, they'll come and swap them over for me. So that's a good thing. So we've got a bit more down now. I'm almost down to the levels I want to be. So damp course is here, this one here, and I've taken it down one two three four bricks so 300 mil down that should be plenty because i'm going to put in 100 mil of type one and then we'll put in some sand and cement and then we'll be going with the slab so that should bring us up to about a brick and a half down from damp which will be pretty much spot on so a track machine up onto the top of the heap and started filling up the skip which didn't take very long at all and there we go, a level loaded skip, perfect. And a pile ready for the next one. I managed to keep some good sub base from underneath the patio, so that was handy. So it was time to change the bucket so I could now dig the foot in for the retaining wall. I'm digging the foot in down 450 mil. That'll be more than substantial to hold this retaining wall in the correct place where it has to be. And there we go, the foot in was dug. So we've got a bit of rain coming today, but it's all good because I've got a burning hot pasty. And speaking of burning, hey, I want to talk to you about the importance of having a fire alarm in your home. Imagine this scenario. In the middle of the night, your family are asleep and suddenly a fire breaks out in the kitchen. Thick smoke fills the air, making it difficult to see and breathe. In moments like this, every second counts. This is why having a fire alarm in your home is absolutely crucial. A fire alarm is your first line of defense against the devastating effects of fire. It's a really simple device, but its impact could be life-saving. This is why I'm happy to announce I've collaborated with Xsense Smoke Alarms to help prevent fire in the home. Last year alone in the UK, there was over 6,000 people who were injured due to fire. And unfortunately, 321 sadly died. Myself and Xsense Pro Smoke Alarms are committed to lowering this number. This is why I'm more than happy to promote their brand new smoke alarm system, the Link Pro Smoke Alarm with Base Station. So what comes in the box? 
you will receive three detector units on one base station. With the power lead for the base station and all the fixings required. You'll also get an instruction manual and a QR code to link to your telephone. The system also connects to your Wi-Fi so you'll be notified if there's any problems when you're out and about. And with the location button on the back of each detector, you'll be able to pinpoint where the fire is with greater accuracy. What a brilliant feature! So don't delay, get your Xsense Pro Smoke Alarm today. I've left links in the description and it's pinned at the top of the comments. It could prevent you having to call these guys. So now I know my home is safe, it's back to work. Thank you so much, Xsense. Right, so now it's raining, I thought I might as well make the use of the time and nip down to Travis Perkins and get all the materials ordered. So I'm going to nip down there now and see what they've got for me. Hopefully, they'll have everything I need. So here we are again, the one and only Travis Perkins. Let's go and see if they've got the stuff. Oi, oi. Well, we're in. The only thing they didn't have were the exact match to the brick. So I've gone for the closest I can find, which is a Atherston Red. Um, and they've even got to be brought in from the Martlesham branch for me. And I've also staggered deliveries on this, so I haven't got so much stuff there at once. So the first delivery, I'm going to be getting all the stuff for the groundworks, the stuff for the footing, so the ballast, the cement, um, the echo channels, they're coming in the first delivery. Oh, and not to forget, the Type 1's coming with his first delivery, the boards are coming with his first delivery, so I can protect this driveway and the whacker plate, so I can whack all this stuff down good and hard. So now it's the next morning and the boys should have come and entered this skip but still sat here full so that's going to hold me up a little bit which is a right pain in the... Hopefully the boys turn up first thing this morning and get rid of this one. I want two now today. If they don't turn up, I'm on the phone. Where's my skips? Where's my skips? <laughs> yes, he is here to change my skip. Come on! Now we can get working again. Happy days. Diesel run, I'm out of diesel. Just started blipping that machine, so I best not let it run all the way down to nothing because if that happens, then I've got to bleed all the system through and that's the last thing I want to be doing. So I'm going to go and get a couple of gallons of, uh, go and get a gallon of uh, diesel. That should be enough to get me through the rest of this. So now, here's your chance to win a prize. <laughs> Xsense are giving you the chance to win one of their fabulous fire alarm systems. Yes, that's right. One of the X-Pro Link fire alarm systems. If you want to win one of these uh, fire alarm systems, all you've got to do is comment on the video, hit the subscribe, and I'll pick one lucky winner. So you guys will be protected. Your home will be all protected, nice and safe, for free. So simply comment on the video, make sure you're subscribed, and you'll be in with the chance to win a fabulous Xsense Pro fire alarm system, courtesy of Xsense. How cool are they? Oi, oi. So there's another skip fault all ready to go. I've got another one on its way. Happy days. And I reckon I've got about half a load's worth to go in that one, but it's always good to have a little bit of half a skip spare. So I'm gonna have some leftover stuff and wash out and this and that. So we can throw it all into that skip. So the third one will be absolutely plenty. I've also graded all of the type one that we had left over there, what I've reused for what was underneath the patio, regraded it to the right levels, ready for when we come along to get our slabs down. But we're gonna have to whack all of this first. I've left a channel out along this side here, ready for the echo channels to go in, which is nice. And I'll put some boards up there to stop it all falling down into the footing, because I don't wanna be hand digging that out, that's for sure. So now skip number three turned up, and I tracked in all of that type one. The first delivery arrived, that was the dust. And I got the breaker out, because I wanted to snap off this concrete next to the posts. That would free up me to be able to finish digging the footing right away along this fence line. And there it is, all done. Boom. Then it was time to get the echo channels out, bump them around, ready for installation. Get the lead out and knock up a load of ballast by hand half a bag of dust to 10 shovels, in it goes, bosh, then into the barra once it was mixed and start filling up the footing. The footing's 450 deep, so it took a good few barras, but once it was full, it was time to level it off with a tamp, 
get my level on there to make sure it's perfect and then give it a wipe over with my float to keep it smooth. Look at the depth of that. And that was the footing complete. Lovely old job. So I've got a few blocks here now. These are gonna be the ones that I'll set the job out with before I put the engineering's down. I've knocked up some ballast here now. And I'm running it along this wall because I'm gonna set these echo channels in right the way along. I'm gonna have a very slight fall from this end to that, probably about an inch of fall will be absolutely plenty. You only need very little fall on it. As long as it's going down, the water will flow that way. Water won't go uphill. So as long as I put a very little fall on it, that won't look too bad on the eye, but it'll look really good on the eye. You won't be able to notice the fall when you look at the patio as a whole. So I'll just gently drop that down towards that corner and then it'll be around the corner, still go down and that's more until we get into the drain. So it was setting in time using my rubber mallet and my long level there just to make sure I had a very slight fall on it until I reached the corner. Right, so I've come around the corner now. As we can see, we've got a very, very slight fall on this, just tiny. Look all the way through here, anywhere I put it on. We are just turning the bubble down right the way along. Just turning the bubble right the way along. So the water's gonna flow along there nicely. Now I'm coming into where I'm joining into the grey water pot, which is here. So what happens with these is you've got these little holes. I'm going to take one of these holes out, then we'll put a four inch Osmo onto that with a bend. And then I'll bend it and a little bit of pipe and it will go down into here. So I've dug out this section here and I'll cut a bit of this out and then it will go in and the direction of this actually runs this way as well so it's going to go absolutely perfect that's what we want also i put a bag in here to stop anything getting down to the bottom so i haven't picked all this stuff out it's only clean bubble but underneath there we don't want any of that getting into the into the sewer so that's what we do we put a bag in there and it keeps it nice so now i'm quickly nipping to travis to go and get a couple of bends and a bit of pipe Brilliant, that's my pipe sorted. Happy days, I had what I wanted. Unfortunately, I could only get a three metre length. But I have got it in here. I had to just cut off, wouldn't you believe this? I had to cut off the amount which I needed, about 600 mil. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna now nip down to screw fix as well because I wanna buy something to help me make this job a little bit easier. So I'm at screw fix and I've got myself a foot pump. My wheelbarrow wheel is just a little bit flat, so that's gonna make my life a hell of a lot easier. So I figured while I'm out and about, save me coming out later, I might as well get myself some breakfast. We're back at the Golden Arches for a double sausage and egg McMuffin with a hash brown. <laughs> so after that tasty breakfast, it was time to cut a hole in the echo channel, then also cut a hole in the main drainage, mark the pipe and cut that as well. Then we had the perfect pipe for the job. Look at that, the perfect fit. Then on with the echo channel itself over the top and it was ready for concrete in in. Then I tapped the original ring back over the top with a rubber mallet, stuck the lid on. That was just plumbed into the grey water sewer. I then had to gun out some of the concrete and run the channels right the way up to the fence line. This time I ran them down the opposite way so they flowed towards the hole. So now that all the drainage is in, it's time to knock up a mix so I can set the blocks all the way around now ready for the retaining wall. I paralleled the wall off of the building line which is the house by setting a block at each end and then measuring off to make sure it was square, which it was. And then finally, it was time to get laying. It's been a while since I've laid something. Oi, oi! But now, I was laying along this line really, really fast. No change there. And got these, slapped these box down really, really quick. And then suddenly, we had a whole wall set out. I then got back in the machine, tracked over everything, filled up with some type one around the edge. So we were then ready for building the wall and also ready for the slabs as well. Then it was out with a whacker plate to give it one final compact all the way down to make sure it was good and solid and it weren't going to sink. So then we were ready, absolutely ready for slabs to go on top of this. 
lovely old job. Right, let's show you the drain working then. Let's throw the water down here. There it goes. The water comes flying along. We're gonna hit that corner now. It's coming along down this hole and straight out into the drain. That's how it works. Absolutely spot on. Nice. So there we have it. All prepped up, all the way around, ready for the brick wall, which is coming next. Right, so I've been moving house all weekend. So now we're back and it's time to get on with the bricks. I bumped out a few, got a few ready. So we're gonna get these engineerings down first because we don't want any moisture coming out of the ground and engineering stop that because they're non-porous. So we're gonna get some engineering course all the way around. I've got some blocks here to back up this section here behind the back. So we'll run a course of them along that wall there and then we'll be, they'll all be hidden by the face brickwork so you'll never ever be seen again. So let's get a gauge of muck on and let's get this going. This time I was knocking up Bricky's muck. So it's water, feb, 10 shovels of sand, half a bag of dust. Leave that mix for a while and that'll be a lovely mix ready to go in the barra. Right, I have everything I need now. So the first brick is going this way around. We'll get him on here. Now I'm looking for a gauge here, so we will be measuring it off of this slab, 75 mil, which we are exactly, that is gauge. I'll use my boat level now just to level it up that way. Now I'm just going to run two along and then put a block on top and I can run my string line down the other side. So I'll quickly run one on here. Now if you notice, the way I've set this out is so that I break the bond of the block work as I run along. Now you don't always have to do that, but I like to because... I think it keeps it stronger. Now I've got those three down there. I can get this level. I know that my first brick, this one is gauge. So I level to that. I know it'll be exactly 75 mil at the other end. Just like to keep an eye on my perps here. nice and then I'll range it through just to make sure we're running nice and straight now run two on here I can use these ones now as a guide for height because I know they're level so if I try and get them as close to that as possible when I'm laying them I know I'm not going to be a million miles out and I'll do that by using the palm of my hand just feeling that there's no lip there you know I know that's not going to be far off at all. I mean, none of this back stuff here is going to be seen, but it's nice to peace of mind. There we go. It's absolutely spot on. It's nice to have peace of mind that we're going to be fairly good. Now, these are the face bricks I'm going to be using. They're as close a match as I can get to these as I can. I don't think they're too bad for colour. I think they're going to look pretty good. Now, the reason I've got one of these out is when I come to do the top of the wall, I've got a brick on edge going like that. Now, if the bottom isn't set out right to the same width of that, we'll have a lip. The wall will come up, and then when we put the top one on, we'll have a lip either side. So I like to set them out so they're exactly the same as the brick that I'm going to top it with. And I can do that just by moving this small gap in the middle in or out of touch. But that is pretty good there so we know we're going to be okay when we get to the top so now i went down to the other end this time it was a corner setting out exactly the same as i did the other end and then running along the line pick and dipping right the way along making sure all the perps were nice and even right the way through then all of the engineering's were down so we were ready then to bump out a load of bricks back and forward back and forward i had a whole pack to bring round but it didn't take me too long, 12 at a time, on the shoulder, bosh. 
There we go. I've gone through nearly all of the bricks now. I've just left one band at the front here. They'll be for the brick on edge on the top. But I just want to get the bulk of the wall in first of all. So we're fully loaded out. That's my workout sorted. So now it's time to build a couple of corners. One up here, four course corner, four course corner here, and a four course rack there. Then we'll get that running. And also I've got to go and nip and get the pipe because the driver didn't bring me slabs or my, my two inch pipe for the weeps through this wall. So I'm going to nip down to Travis and go and pick that up. And the slabs are going to come either late this afternoon or first thing in the morning. So we're still on schedule, just. Right, so with a four course corner, you only have to go out two bricks to get the four courses, but I like to go an extra one just to give it a bit of bulk at the top of the wall. So when I go to pull, I've got a bit more brickwork at the top there to keep me nice. So I'm gonna go out three. That way, it'll be all nice and strong for when I go to pull the line. Right, there's the first one on. I like to gauge this one. I know my first one's gauge, so I'll go for that. That is 75 mil. There we go. That's my three. Now on with the level. See where we are. Just needs a little tap down, which is ideal. It's much better to tap down than having to take it up and put more muck underneath it. So always just go a little bit high, just a touch. Now we're gonna upright it. Both ends. There, and then range it in. Now we know we're nice and straight. Let's bring that back a little bit there just getting them nice and central that's good now I'm looking my eyes straight down here to line up with the one below there we go so that's my first course there that one down level now I know my face is right so little trick is I hold the brick there and as long as it's flush will be exactly right then I can just range that in because that's where I want to be at the top exactly the same width as that brick as I was saying earlier on so now for course number two once I had two on, then I went to course three, and then I went for course number four. So that's the four. Now I'm gonna do three brick on edge and let that go off. And then when it comes to pulling the brick on edge, that will be gone off good and solid, and it'll be easy to put a line on it. Sometimes when you put the brick on edge, you pull the line nice and tight, because you want it really tight at the top to keep a nice tight line, so you haven't got any sag in it, and the wall doesn't sag. So you want the stuff gone off as well as you can, so you can give it a bit of a tug. Nice and full. Push it in. Every three of these is the same distance as one brick. So you have three for every one. So my top course is half bonded at the moment, so I'm following the second course down, which is full brick, just to keep a rough eye on where I'm going with it. There we go, that's better. Nice, nice, we like up this end, that's pretty good as well. So there we go, there's our little rack corner as such set up. So now I'm going to do the same here and do the same over here. Then once they're built, then we'll be able to run it all in. 
There's going to be a step somewhere in here as well, but for, for now, I'll get the corners built and then we'll set the step out once I've got a few bricks down. Right, I'll quickly go nip to Travis now because the boys forgot to bring me my drainage pipe, which I need for the weep holes for the wall. So I'm going to quickly shoot that. We need that pipe in there, so any moisture that's in the ground that's higher can escape the wall without blowing the wall. So we're going to dot a few of them along there. I normally like to put them in every two meters, so that's what we're going to do on this one. Well, probably, probably just over two meters, 1.8 meters long is gauge. So I'll probably do them at 1.8. And Travis had the perfect pipe for the job. So now that allowed me to start running in along the back here, because it's not going to be seen, I've decided to run some block work right away through there. It makes no odds because it's never, ever going to be seen. And if you look, it's below the height of the gravel board. So even if the fence comes down, you're still not going to be able to see it. Then a course of brick straight over the top of that. And where that is the height, ready for just underneath the brick on edge and then time for the face work mucking the wheat pole pipes in as i went making sure they're in nice and tight lovely absolutely typical just as you start getting laying start belting down Blech. oh well i might as well bite have a quick bite to eat i reckon Ugh, i've covered everything up out there anyway so we're staying dry but Oh God, <laughs> doesn't help my timekeeping. Looks like it stopped. Let's crack on, oi oi. Now for the bit that every bricklayer loves, the running in. Spreading the bed, laying the bricks, laying them nice and clean, one at a time, making a really nice job of it. Making sure they're all flush, perfectly laid. Little grooves in the muck also help when compressing down the muck. It makes them go down just that little bit easier. Nice spread, back and forward, clear off the surplus, and then on with a brick. Nice full perp, nicely to the line. Lovely old job. Right, so I've got a step going in here. And the size of the big slabs are 9.20, so I've marked out 9.25, give it 5 mil. I want to keep it quite tight in there, so that's the measurement there. So I'm going to leave them two courses off of that and the brick on edge, and then carry on. So I'll run that up straight there, and then obviously this skin as well, I'll run that up straight as well. And then the slab can sit on here, and that'll be nice to go up onto the garden. So there we go, there's the wall in, but have you spotted the mistake? Tricky's a womble. This is what happens, right, when it rains and your mind just comes off the ball and you're in and out of showers, jumping in and out. I forgot to put the pipes in. They're sat there. They're not in the wall. <sighs> Don't! That's okay though. I'm going to let this go off just a little bit and then I'm going to carefully take out bricks and get them in, get them in properly. I can't leave it and not put them in, you know what I mean? They've got to be in there, so... <laughs> But hey, that's what happens when you, you just take your, take your mind off of the ball just for a minute. Things on your mind or whatever, head down, ass up, and you can forget things as easily as that. So, gonna get them in now, make sure it's all right. <laughs> there we go, they're in there now. Lovely. So now I've set up my string lines to do my brick on edge. One either side to keep them married up nicely, nice and level with each other. Same up the other end there. I'm gonna run along here now, brick on edge, get this wheel capped off. Wall, wheel, wheel? <laughs> Wall capped off. Oi, oi. So I came along the wall, got the right decent side of the brick, filled the frog up nice, three swipes, and that's her perped, and then pushed it in to the one I'd laid before. Pushing it up nice and tight, and keeping an eye, I'm staying engaged with a second course down. Then it was onto the other flank and running in this one as well. After that, started pointing all the way along the wall. Perps first, then beds, then the tops and the backs. And then give it a nice, fresh brush off. Perfect. Well, there we have it. That is the wall all in now, complete. 
all brick on edged up right the way to the end. I've got a big void down the back of here now between the fence and the wall and that's where the pipes are going through. So to stop them clogging up when I backfill that, I put a few bricks over there, just rest them in there and that will stop the muck filling up the pipe. So I just put a bit of rubbly bricks over the top and just make it like a little, little bridge over the top and then I can backfill over the top of that and then none of the muck is going to get into the pipe and block it up so that it will just seep through the rubble as such. So that's the idea for sorting out them. So the next thing now is to start the patio. So here we have a pack of slabs. I also have another pack just outside the door there. And the pattern I'm gonna be following coming along this way is this pattern. So I'm gonna be working this pattern this way along, right the way along and then repeat it as we come along and round this corner. So now we're gonna be changing into sharp sand and cement for underneath these slabs because we've got a good solid base now. So sharp sand and cement, and then I can get laying. I know these are Indian stone, but oh my word. Look at that bad boy sitting on them. Right, so here's my mix. I've done 10 shovels of sand half a bag of dust and instead of feb this time i'll put sbr in there sbr is a sticky stuff that you put in the mix and it helps these slabs stick rock hard so you put a ball of do big dollop of that in the mix as well and it keeps them so once they go down and goes off they're stuck solid so happy days big up the sbr and now the pattern has started So there's a big chunk of that patio in there. Not one cross joint throughout the whole thing. It's looking tidy. Nice, really nice. So I've got a few slabs left here. Also got this other pack outside of here. So I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna have plenty of slabs. We've got a few cuts to do obviously, but I'm gonna let this lot go off. Then I'll run my cuts in afterwards once it's gone off. But yeah, we're coming on nicely now. Another day of laying, and I don't think we'll be far off. So it was out with a disc cutter, I marked a load of slabs, and then it was straight on cutting all of these bad boys to fit each individual gap. One at a time, in they went. Lovely old job. Nice and level, all perfect. So now those cuts are in, it's time to finish the rest of the patio. Here we go then, the patio's looking fine. We've only got a few more slabs to do and I've had a visit from the boss man. Hey, one, Brittany. Brilliant job. <laughs> i thank Mr. Mark here for, and uh, MF Property Services for getting me this work and this job. Hopefully, there'll be some more. Oi, oi. Oh, yeah. So, there we go. There's the patio. All in. We've got the ladder man here today. Nice ass. <laughs> Ladder man's here helping me today to do all the tidying up and get the last few bits and bobs doing. Which job we need to do next is grout all of these slabs in. So I'm gonna be using something called Easy Joint, which we have here. I've got a few tubs of this, and basically you wet the whole patio down like I have done. It also brings up the colors of them slabs, which are really nice. But it wets everything down. Then you pull that easy joint around the place, use the brush, brush it in, hose it down, brush it all in again, make sure it's all nice and full, and that should be a lovely old job. So that's what we're doing first of all. Well, ladder man, this is backfilling behind the wall here. We've got this tool to move around, a few little bits and bobs like that, but we're nearly done. So there we have it, patio complete. She's looking lovely. Wow, what a beautiful job. All the topsoil now leveled off, ready for turfing or whatever. Whatever they fancy doing with it. But I don't think we've done a bad job there at all. What are we saying? Hit it up in the comments. Mark's out of 10. Oi, oi. All we've got left to do is clear up the front pop the fence panel in, we're all done.
So there we go, that is job complete. And you're probably wondering, how long did that job take me? Well, it took me exactly 10 days, which is really, really strange because if you hit the code XSense WSA, you get 10% off the fire alarms that I've been advertising in this video. Happy days. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please, if you have, hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace out, and pow. Give us a kiss. Uh. <laughs>